Now, the interesting thing was that uh, while we were, we were in post, they hired publicists, a guy by the name of Jeff, Jeffrey Wells, somebody you might want to talk to. Jeffrey Wells lived in California, and he was trying to come up with an angle for how to publicize his sequel. So he, you know, he came up with various angles, and one of his angles was American kids are obsessed with Freddy Krueger. And we were like, ha, 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 very funny. Um, but he had found a few articles somewhere or other that said that kids were getting dressed up as Freddy for Halloween or that kids were, were dressing up as Freddy and going to screenings of Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, a la the Rocky Horror Show or something like that. And so he kind of thought this was a good angle to try to promote. And, and I think that he actually didn't think that it was an angle, that I think he actually thought it was happening. It was definitely happening in a nascent sort of low level way. I was just reading some letters when I was sitting at the uh, New Line office uh, and um, they just made mention of Freddie being this kind of hip cool sort of ironic wink wink uh, you know uh, uh, cult figure if you will that was I guess the wink wink part came obviously because he was venal and homicidal and, and, and evil but there was just kind of this posturing that some people were taking that was kind of cool to be into him whatever that meant ultimately but that was something I definitely was picking up in letters, in, I, didn't, I don't remember ever seeing anything in print, but I just remember seeing stuff written, particularly one letter I remember coming from, I think it was some students at Columbia who were kind of expressing this thing. So really that was it, that was the seed of it. So based upon that, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, where there's one indication, there are a hundred others, I called around and tried to find any theaters that had ever heard of people coming up, coming by and dressing up as Freddy. And I envisioned there would be something along the lines, maybe some nascent beginnings of a kind of a quasi-Rocky horror picture th show thing uh, at, I guess, midnight showings of the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And he actually set up a screening of Nightmare on Elm Street and invited the press and said, with the idea that Freddy impersonators would show up. And he hired some people to be Freddy impersonators. And a few people came along who weren't hired by him. And so we thought, well, maybe there's something going on here. I think there was one particular uh, moment when, um, God, there was one particular moment on Halloween night, 1985. It wasn't 84 in which we got Robert England to get his Freddy Krueger makeup on. And we went in the Halloween parade from the village all the way up to, I think it was 34th Street, and then going across and then down. The one thing we didn't have, we didn't have a light on him, which we should have. But it was cool, because a lot of people recognized it. I thought it was one of the most fun things I've ever done, because he was waving and people were saying, yo, Freddy, and there was a real New York moment, you know, to have uh, him Kind of, we, we basically walked about, I don't know, five or six miles. It's a lot of fun. Uh, on a non-intellectual level, Freddy's the logo for the whole experience. Freddy is this sort of great silhouetted logo with the claw and his posture and his thrust pelvic walk, you know, and the snap brim hat and the tattered sweater, and there's a certain sexual threat there. But he becomes the logo. What he represents, I don't really know. I mean, I think, you know, on an intellectual level, he's a certainly a contemporary boogeyman, you know, and probably represents all that's disgusting and evil that you have to confront in the world. You know, hey, it's time to move out. It's time to be a grown-up. It's time to get laid. It's time to, you know, pay your own bills. It, it's, he's, that, he's what's coming in life. And uh, life's not fair. And, and, and a, a lot of suburban teenagers have been so coddled. And the 80s was sort of the zenith for that. You know, there's a great, phenomenal, I, I, someday if I ever have a wall big enough for it, I'm going to get it. It's going to be the only piece of Freddy memorabilia that I'm really going to display. It's a great French poster. And it's this, it's this one-story, sort of soft focus, classic, early 1960s European version of, of the American tracked suburban house. It's not the tracked suburban house of today that's a little boutiqued up, but it's the real plain, hard-edged one. We're sort of looking at it 
and you're very low angle and, and everything. And, uh, and, and, and there's a lot of sky and coming out of the sky is the claw, you know. You know, and it's this great poster, and uh, that really sort of sums up what I think. I think that Freddy is the the evil coming to, to pollute suburbia and coming back. You know, you can't escape evil. You can't hide from it. It's everywhere.